Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. Yes, this is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with to come together and study another portion of God's word. Boys and girls, I pray that you've had a blessed, good past week. I pray that you participated in Vacation Bible School. You learned more about Jesus and how important it is to have a personal relationship with him. As we get ready to go into the word for today, we're going to pray and prepare our hearts. And I hope that you will receive the word as seed planted into your hearts that produces roots and bear much fruit. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for this day that you have blessed us to come together and study another portion of your word. I pray, Father, that something will be said that will open the eyes of our children, dear Lord, to help them to understand what is truly important when it comes to life here on this earth. And Lord, I pray that they will make it a priority to have a personal relationship with you. And if they already have a personal relationship, I pray, Father, that they will make it a priority to draw closer to you so that you will draw closer to them so that they will taste a little bit of heaven here on this earth. Lord, we love you. We adore you. We thank you. Bless this time that we have together. Open up the eyes of our children. Give them insight. Give them wisdom. Give them guidance, dear Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So, boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, now we get ready to go into the word for today. Today's word is going to be found in Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 15. And it's going to be talking about this businesswoman and how she was converted and she was once poor, but she became rich. But boys and girls, sometimes we think that because we're rich, we cannot be poor. But yes, you can be rich and poor at the same time. Yes, you could be rich and poor at the same time. And we're going to talk about that. How can we be rich and poor at the same time, boys and girls? Here's how you can do it. You can have all of the money in the world that please the flesh, all the money that please the flesh. However, if your heart remains empty, the result is poverty of the soul. And what is poverty? That means being poor in your soul. Boys and girls, what we do for the flesh, the flesh is um, the external, but the soul is what matters. And if the soul is poor, then you are poor. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how much wealth you have, how many possessions you have. If your soul is poor, then you are poor. And how would your soul be poor? If your heart is empty. And how will our heart be empty when it doesn't have Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So in other words, boys and girls, many believe that they will be the happiest person in the whole world if they had all the money they desire. Just give me money. Money is going to answer all of my, my situations, all of my circumstances, all of my hurts, my pains, my sorrows, my woes, my emptiness. But the reality is this. Eventually, we find out that there is more to life than money. Money can fulfill the things of the pleasure. I mean, the pleasures of the flesh, but money cannot fulfill the desires in the craving of the soul. What fulfills the craving of the soul is Jesus Christ. Keep saying that. But today, boys and girls, we will learn about this businesswoman who um, she knew God, but she did not know Jesus. And she had riches. Yes, she had riches, but she was not saved. Her name was Lydia. So we are going to hear a short story about this lady named Lydia, who was a businesswoman who had riches, but she was yet still poor. Amen. Amen. Slapstick Theater. Lydia. This is Lydia who worshipped God and was a dealer in purple cloth. One day, Lydia was with a group of women by a river. Oh, hey! Paul and Silas came and started speaking to the women. As she listened to them, God helped her to understand and believe in what they were saying. Oh, wow! She and her whole household were baptized. Lydia asked Paul and Silas to come and stay in her home. Okay. Paul and Silas stayed with Lydia many times as she always opened her home to them. Okay, boys and girls. So what did we learn about Lydia? 
Lydia was a businesswoman. She sewed purple cloth and the purple cloth required purple dye and the purple dye was expensive. So the cloth that she was selling was very expensive. So she was a very rich um, businesswoman, but she did not know Jesus. And so when she heard about Jesus, boys and girls, she was moved by the message of Jesus Christ. And she believed she became a child of God and because she became a child of God. She was in so influential that she and her household all were baptized, all believed in Jesus and were all baptized, boys and girls. And then because of Lydia, who had all of this money and all of these possessions and everything, yet she was poor until she accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And she became one of the richest. And God wants the same for you. And God wants the same for me, boys and girls. Don't be deceived. Though you may... You and your parents may have all of the possessions in the world, got lots of stuff, fancy house, fancy cars, and, and you can ask for anything and your parents will give it to you or whatnot. But without Jesus, boys and girls, you are poor. And not only are you poor, but your heart is empty because it's not about the things that you actually please on the outside, the flesh. It's about really what is needed for the soul, the craving of the soul. And what does the soul crave for more than anything is a relationship with Jesus Christ. God has set eternity in each of our hearts. And because eternity is in our hearts, the only way to fill that void is through the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. I like what Revelation chapter three, verse seven through 18 says. And it says this about those individuals who are rich and say they don't need Jesus. It says, you say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and I do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched that you are pitiful, that you are poor, that you are blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and the white clothes to wear so that you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so that you can see. In other words, what Jesus was saying in this particular passage is that boys and girls, the things that you have have deceived you. The stuff that you have that pleases the flesh has deceived you and you think you don't need anything. But right now you are lost. And because you are lost, he's saying that he wants to give you that which will save your soul and make you truly become rich. Amen? Amen. And what are those things that makes us come, become rich? Those things that makes us to become rich boys and girls they include a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, boys and girls, as long as you are separated from Jesus Christ as your Savior and your Lord, you will always be poor. I don't care how much money you have, how many, how many zeros are in your check account or your or your allowance, how much money you get for allowance, how many toys that you have, how many devices that you have, what latest gizmos or gadgets that you have or whatnot. If you do not have Jesus Christ, you are empty and you are poor. Yes, there are individuals who are out there who have nothing when it comes to those physical things. They may be the poorest person that you've ever seen, don't have the clothes, don't have the shelter, don't have the transportation, hungry all the time. But yet at the same time, guess what, boys and girls? They are rich in Jesus Christ because of their personal relationship. And guess what? At the end of the day, when this world, is, when life on this earth, where earth is over, they're going to enter into presence of Jesus Christ by those who are rich and think that the riches of this world is what brings them true life. They are going to experience death, eternal death, which are forever separation from God in a place called hell. You can choose as to which one you want to make your priority, boys and girls, the riches of this world. But what does it gain to get profit a man to gain the whole wide world and lose his soul? No, boys and girls, I want you to focus on your soul. And truly be rich by establishing a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's by believing in him. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whosoever believes in Jesus Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so if you do have it going on, your parents got it going on with the riches and possessions and all those things. Boys and girls, you can top that off. Top it off with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And then you are truly rich indeed. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May God keep you. And may you consider the message, boys and girls, rich but poor. And if
if you are poor because no relationship with Jesus Christ, reach out to us and we'll let you show you and guide you and direct you on how you must be saved. Amen. Amen. God bless you.